Hi guys, Mark Dawes, NFPS Limited. It's the 1st of November today, and I just wanted to follow up on this blog post, on the blog post that we sent out last week. And that was about the non-delegable duty of care. Now, if you haven't seen that blog post, there's a link right below this video to it, and it would be really good if you haven't seen it to actually go to that link first and then come back and watch this video, because it will make more sense to you if you do. But just to encapsulate what happened in the Supreme Court ruling, which is what the, the, the previous blog post was about, a few years ago, a young girl suffered a trauma in a pool, and the school, the local council, uh, the education authority, if you like, were found to be liable by the Supreme Court. And the fundamental ruling is that if you are a school and you subcontract out your activities, as in this case they did with the swimming lessons, you cannot actually subcontract away the duty of care that you owe to the children. So in that case, the Supreme Court ruled that the local council, the education authority, if you like, were negligent for subcontracting activities to a private company that took the swimming lessons that resulted in the child having a trauma. And like I said, you can read more about that in the link below this video. But what has that got to do with us in our world, in the restraint world, physical intervention world, care, healthcare, security, whatever? Well, I want to come at this from one angle today, and this is just about physical intervention training, because this is really, really important, and the ramifications of this ruling have now made a case law precedent. So let me just explain to you how this could affect all of us in this industry. So let's uh, use a door supervision as an example. Here we have a venue. So we have a nightclub, a bar, whatever, yeah, and we have a venue. And that venue wants to employ door supervisors. So they go to a door supervision company and they actually subcontract that aspect there to a door supervision company. Now what happens historically with door supervision companies is they actually have people on their books and each door person each door supervisor will be responsible for their own training. So they'll have door supervisor one here, for example. They'll have door supervisor two here. And they'll have possibly, maybe, door supervisor three over here. And each of these door supervisors is subcontracted and does work for the agency that in turn supplies the staff to the venue. Now here's the thing. What if this door supervisor here has done their PI training with company A? And this door supervisor has done their PI training with company B. And this one, let's say, has done their PI training with a completely different company altogether, and we'll call that company C. What we've got here are three different systems of restraint or intervention, whatever you want to call it, being used. Now, the fundamental problem here is, is what happens when they restrain someone. You could have some people trained in a good system of intervention. They've been trained properly. You may have other people who are doing mad stuff, like putting headlocks on and putting people in the prone position with an increased risk of death. Based upon that Supreme Court ruling, the question is, who is liable? Would it be the door supervision company for allowing three door supervisors to work with different training, or will it be the venue for not checking and doing their due diligence, if you like, that a door supervision company are actually supplying properly trained staff who are trained fit for purpose? Because what you've fundamentally got here are three different systems being used and lack of control. Now we've looked at this and I, I spoke to a lot of the guys and girls who train with us and we've actually come up with a solution for you. And here's the solution. Whichever training company you've trained with to do your physical intervention, because that's where the liability rises. It's not much to do with conflict management or customer service per se, but the real liability will arise when physical intervention or physical restraint is used. And this is a problem for a lot of people running door supervision companies and security companies, and even in the care agency where you've got agency staff being supplied into the NHS, for example. How is the NHS or that particular unit or that particular hospital checking to make sure they've got the appropriate training? So here's what we're offering. We come up with a solution. For those of you that have got your Level 3 award in Delivers of Physical Intervention for the Private Security Industry Sector, which qualifies you to teach the Module 4 PI unit of the Door Supervisors Licence to Practice Award, if you've got that and you wish to map over to us so you can teach it under our system and use our materials, we're going to do that for you on a one-day course, as I've already said, but we're also, and this is what I forgot to tell you a moment ago, we're also going to include 
the license to use our materials within the cost of doing that, which is probably going to equate to the cost of your refresher. So if you wish to map over to us as a trainer to use our materials and our system to deliver the unit for the module four PI unit of the Dorset Advisors License to Practice Award, the physical intervention unit, then the price of the license to use those materials will be included in the mapping over process, which will take less than a day because you've already got the competencies, you've already got your level three award. Our instructors are just going to take you through our system and then we'll sign you off and give you the license to use our materials. And we get a lot of people coming to us who've trained with many other providers purely because they wish to have the license to use our materials because it's, it's not very prohibitive, it's not very restrictive and it's certainly not obstructive. We give everything to you by email download. You can print to demand. There's no workbooks to buy from us. There's no certification fees to, to provide to us. You can go directly to your awarding body once you've got our materials and certificate directly with them, which cuts us completely out of the loop. And whether you run one course or whether you run a thousand courses, once you pay that one-off fee, that license is yours to use on a 12-month rolling basis. And if you come back and refresh with us, you'll get, again, the rights to use the material included in the refresher price. And if you want to know more, just click on the link below. Thanks for listening.